As we move forward with our van conversion, we are documenting every single step and detail of the progress. Sometimes a little bit too detailed, but we enjoy it at least. However, we have made some mistakes. And those mistakes can haunt you in a tiny space because every time you glance over, it's just looking at you like. <laughs> so annoying. We are never scared to call ourselves out on our own mistakes in hopes that it prevents other people from replicating that same thing. I wanna share with you what we did wrong, how and why it happened, and how we decided to fix it. And let's get moving on our five mess ups so far. <laughs> Mistake number one, we went through so much effort and energy to prevent the van from rusting, that we went underneath it, we took all of the appliances off, we covered it in a new paint. We thought we did it all, but it turns out we missed a spot. The side rail for the side door. This is a removable strip of metal, and for a lot of people when they take it down, they see that whole strip is just covered and rust. We talk about fixing it all the time because we know we have to do it eventually. And we've been avoiding this process because it's a little excruciating. Taking off the rail, scrubbing it down, buffing that thing out, spray painting the whole thing, covering it with a vinyl, and then screwing it back on. We had this van so naked before, it would have been the optimum time to do it, but we didn't. We have bigger fish to fry. <laughs> and it's still just in my head. Moving on. Before we get into mistake number two, actually, I want to talk a little bit about body weight. Fiat Ducatos come in all shapes and sizes, and they should be loved equally, regardless of their weight. We love them for their curves, for their strength. Beautiful. However, no matter the size of your Fiat, they all have a weight limit of 3.5 tons. If you have an L2H2 like we used to, that curbside weight was like 1.8 ton. We were not concerned about weight at all. We could use any material. We could load any amount of stuff in it. We weren't really afraid of hitting that 3.5. But now with our L5H3, that curbside weight is over two ton. So that means we need to be a bit more conscious, especially because we're naturally going to need more material to build out the space. It adds up quickly. And we did a stupid weight decision. We did it with the floors. Sound deadening materials are awesome. We can know that they help and we we're excited to have a quieter van, but we ended up lining all of the strips along the floor with this material and it adds up. It's a, it's like a rubber. It, it has some weight to it. I'm slicing up a bunch of uh, sound deadening for the floor. Obviously we want to stay under three and a half ton, but these things are pretty actually heavy. So look at that, there's just a few of them and here you have it, two kilos right away. So this is, this is roughly two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, easily twenty kilos for no noise deadening just for the floor. We never, I mean I never would have expected that. And I think we could have saved many a kilo if we had spaced those out more. And this was a debate that we had between ourselves like before making this decision. And that's why we're both just like, ah. We've gone back and forth on how worth it it would be to have these sound deadening panels on the floor. And in our last van, when we were driving, and we'd be like talking to each other, it wouldn't have even been satisfying to film because it was quite loud when we were driving. Like it was even hard to listen to podcasts sometimes. Because Absolutely. We couldn't catch everything because it was loud back here. Uh -huh. So we're experimenting with this. We'll see how big of a difference it actually makes, but it's also just an extra bridge for insulation. We'll see, it, it puts a layer between the middle. It's compensated uh, with a weight. It is heavy. This is probably like 20 kilos the floor only like I showed before, but we believe it's worth it. Wrong decision to make, but it's so quiet. It is quiet. But what do you care about more at that point? Weight or quiet? So don't over sound dead in your floor. Now let's move on to mistake three. Has that fish been here the whole time? Lol. 
Millie betrayed me and was here while I was setting up the camera, while I sit down and like the minute I hit record, she leaves and she leaves her fish in frame. Don't leave, please. Please don't leave. No! Celebrities these days, man, unbelievable. Well, I can't move it now, can I? After we spray painted around the bottom portion of the van, we also individually sprayed our side panels, used poppets, pressed them up against the side of the van, and then sealed around them. This was a mistake that we needed to correct very shortly after doing it, and that is leaving gaps along the bottom of those side panels. If water does find a way in, it can escape. But every now and then we will see a stream of water coming out of where we shove the knife up to give some space. No need to seal all the way around something exterior. Leave space on the bottom for water to get out which kind of pairs into mistake number four. This one actually bothers me quite a bit. <sighs> it's not like Fiat and Citron. It's not like they're making vans to actually last you forever. It's not like they're treating this metal for you to be driving around with this one vehicle for the rest of your lifetime. No, no, no. They're making it to last a decade or enough time for you to start neglecting it and then have an eye on the new 2023 model. These vans rust, inevitably rust. And doing rust prevention, it does buy you some time, but it doesn't suddenly make you immune. And this was in our face. <laughs> <laughs> this was coming at us, reminding us of that. When we were dealing with the insulation, we started covering the pockets of the van on, along the bottom, and we noticed that it was already starting to show initial signs of rust. Yeah, there is definitely a layer of dust that I was not able to vacuum, and I'm gonna wipe it off so the hammerite Six sticks to the metal uh, very nicely. And I'm very happy that I found this leftover hemorrhoid in here because that's going to be a good treatment for following years. That is where we had scrubbed, we covered it in paint, we did everything we could to prevent this space from rusting, and it still was rusting. That was part of the reason we decided not to put any wool down there or put any sort of insulation down there because it turns out moisture inevitably ends up there. Don't insulate the very bottom of your chassis. A lot of people will end up stuffing wool or expandable foam on that bottom canal that's right in line with the floor. Those have holes for water and moisture to escape the van. Some water can actually get into some of there and then it can quickly escape from the same space. Stuffing that with wool or foam or any other material all of that material will inevitably get wet. Just avoid it. We put oil up there every few months to like keep it like lubricated. <laughs> I think our big mistake was like stressing so much about this area rusting when it's inevitable that it will rust. A lot of these are actually kind of rust related. Now, before we get into the biggie, Mistake number five. I want to take this opportunity to talk to you about our van conversion bundle. We are so, so excited about this. It includes not only our van build parts list, but it also includes a van design course. Now, this is a video guide that walks you through different designs, how to make specific decisions, the questions you ask yourself, and goes through common mistakes that people make when they're deciding on their layout. You guys know us by now. If you're watching this video, you know us by now. You know that we're super detail oriented and we do a lot of parts research, like a lot, a lot. And if you're thinking, I don't wanna pay money for a parts list, it will save you more than what it costs easily. And it mostly saves you time. So check out the description below to see the van build parts list and the van build bundle. Mistake number five. The vent behind the driver's door started leaking. I think it was over the summer it started happening. And we found out that when something was being tightened, the plastic literally cracked. The water got through that crack in the plastic and started leaking. So the fix was using that sound deadening, like it's essentially like a boot and tape and putting it all around the outside of the vans. We can see a lot of water that accumulates and sits on top of the panorama windows. No leaks, no issue. It's pretty awesome. And it looks cool, especially when the solar is down, it's all black lining around, everything looks really uniform. So that was a mistake that has had a solution. 
but we were nervous about like how that would affect the wood and if there's any rusting because we really didn't want to have to rip everything out and do those roof windows all over again. Can you imagine? So those are our five. Those are our five big mess ups that irritate us, but we wanted to share them because you guys have been following literally every single detail of this build. And sometimes we have so many more details to share with you that we don't look back and reflect on what we already did and how that has been performing. Please avoid these mistakes. That's all I want is for you watching to not deal with any of these same issues later in this build. Like as we progress with this build, we're gonna keep doing mistake videos so that we can immediately review what we have just built and give you feedback on how it's going and everything else. And I guess I should, I haven't even mentioned like where we are. We needed to get away from the workshop. We are literally there seven days a week. There have been over 10 people every single day at the workshop. It's been a lot of chaos. Lottie has been working on the van. We have a lot going on with our barn renovation, a bunch of other projects that we're dealing with, plus making these videos, and we just needed to do a little getaway. We really wanna encourage more comments on this channel, especially when it comes to things like mistakes. So I ask you, you, what was your biggest van build mistake be it design or part of the building process what was it what would you share with this community in hopes that everyone avoids it let us know below we'll see you in the next one have a good week